ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise is due to almighty Allah I praise him I thank him I ask him for his aid and help and I also ask him for his forgiveness And I pray to almighty Allah to forgive all of us I bear witness witness seeking the pleasure of Allah the witness which will benefit on the day of judgment the witness which is sincere for his sake hoping that this witness will benefit on the day of judgment that none has the right to be worshiped except almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i also bear witness that our beloved prophet muhammad is the last and final messenger may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down his peace and mercy upon him his companions and upon all those who follow his footsteps until the day of resurrection dear brothers and sisters i'd like to advise all of you First of all to myself to have taqwa of almighty Allah <clears throat> We just finished the month of taqwa Every single action in that month brought us closer to the taqwa and taqwa is the consciousness of almighty Allah And it has been narrated in the ahadith and the athar that sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum they used to ask each other about the taqwa what is the taqwa so one of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala an he explained taqwa is that when you are walking in a path which is full of thorns you don't want that any harm touches you so you wrap your clothes close to you and then you walk that no harm no thorn touch your clothes and harm it or spoil it so he said this is the taqwa you wrap everything what is halal to yourself and keep yourself away from the haram and you pass this life that is the taqwa another example which uh, it comes to my mind and i have given this example few times so this is to remind myself to you again that when you drive on the motorways these days on the motorways there are speed cameras and among those speed cameras there is a average speed camera that average speed camera what he does technically he bring taqwa in our heart we don't want to go over the 50 limit because if you go over the 50 limit then you reduce it to 40 again to bring it on average that average is the taqwa of the life you have to have the life between the muharramat and halal of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the average scale that is the taqwa of allah if you have done something wrong 
if you exceed it, if you went towards the haram of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to just bring yourself to halal straight away. Do something good. Then it will bring your life on average. That is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was given the advice, he said, Ittaqillah haythu ma kut. Have this taqwa of Allah wherever you are. And then he said that, وَدْبِعِ الْسَيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا After every evil deed which you have performed, haram which you have done, do something good. تَمْحُهَا Which will wipe the effect of the evil from your life. That is the taqwa. You exceeded your limit in your life, you went to the haram, it will bring you back to the halal to make it on average. And that is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقِ الْحَسَنِ And treat the people with the best manners. This was the teaching of the Prophet So this month, the month of Ramadan which we just passed, it is just to increase the taqwa, to bring us more closer to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been fasting, subhanAllah. And our fast was one of the longest fast. One of those countries who had long fast. Around 20 hours we were fasting. Dear brothers and sisters, what kept us away from the food and the drink? What kept us away from the lust of the life? From the beloved things which we want to have all the time? That was the taqwa of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has made it very clear that if you are having this taqwa, if you are fasting, then there are few things you have to apply in your life. In this month, the month of Ramadan, you have to apply those things that you will get rid of your bad habits. The language which you use. The Ramadan was there to put lock on our tongues. That we are not allowed to speak the foolish language, stupid language. So whole month we trained ourselves. The effect of that should be there even after Ramadan. That was the teaching of Ramadan. And subhanAllah, as we know, ayyaman ma'dudat. Few days of Ramadan which came in our life. It is like the training period for all of us. And the effect of the training period should be for on the rest of the year. Every one of us, in our jobs, when we go to the professional jobs, we have the training, a week of the training. Why we have that week of the training? Many things we already know it, but we don't do it again. Why? To revive our skills. To revive our skills, to make it again nice in, uh, and fresh in our brain. So similarly, this taqwa, the month of taqwa came to revive us towards the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers, we should have this taqwa in our lives. I would like to bring few things in our attention. This, this month of Ramadan is the best month to make us a proper Muslim. And alhamdulillah, we welcome Ramadan. We did the ibadah in that. For the sake of Allah, we left eating and drinking and we were fasting. And in the night we were praying. And every one of us, to please Almighty Allah, we stood before Almighty Allah praying. And we know that in the morning we had a job. We had to sacrifice so many things. But we did this. Why? To get that consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If after finishing the Ramadan, if we go back to our normal routine without taking any training from the Ramadan, any traces of Ramadan in our life, if we leave it, subhanAllah, remember this. We have not benefited from Ramadan anything. We have not benefited from Ramadan anything. Ramadan came as a routine and it went. The traces of Ramadan must be there in our life for next 11 months until we welcome Ramadan again. And those people who are fasting during the Ramadan, Alhamdulillah, you can get closer to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fasting other days as well. As our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has clearly mentioned to us and give us guidance. He said that if anybody want to fast, fast ayam al wil The three days every month, the middle of the month, 14, 15 and 16th of Islamic calendar. You fasted, this was the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And if you have more keenness towards the taqwa of Allah, so that goodness doesn't end there, but every week you can fast two days. Mondays and Thursdays, this was the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who are standing for the prayer, subhanallah, you can perform the nafil prayer even after Ramadan. And especially the night prayer. Because we were standing after Isha for a long time. And last 10 days we performed the Qiyam al Tahajjud as well. So remember this. Two rakah in Tahajjud will bring closer to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will give the consciousness of Allah. So try to make, make sure you perform some extra nawafil in your life. And we always give full care that we pray the Salat on its own time. We sacrifice. So this requires after the Ramadan as we are at the job. We have to sacrifice a little bit. We have to adjust our timetable according to the Salawat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Ibadah of Allah. Not that the ibadah is getting adjusted by our timetable, not like that. And then, if we move forward, we have been given the charity. The charity is not enough in Ramadan. Subhanallah, you give the charity out of Ramadan as well. There are many occasions will come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask you to give and spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever wants the khair, the khair was not only in Ramadan, but it is in after Ramadan as well. So don't be the person who is inspired by only Ramadan. No, you are not worshipping Ramadan. You are not worshipping Ramadan. You are worshipping the one who has made the Ramadan. Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ramadan has gone, <coughs> but Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. So we have to get back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the important factor which taught in Ramadan, that is our akhlaq, our manners. We were treating each other with the best of the manners, with the best of the way, with the best treatment. We were forgiving everybody. We were giving more preference to others than us. Subhanallah, when we were here breaking the fast, people were offering each other things. People don't have for themselves, but they were giving to other people. People was giving preference to everybody. People was giving water to everybody after breaking the fast and many times we come early and we help the masjid we clean the masjid and we help and show our respect to other muslim brother and we say please forgive me without doing anything we just ask the forgiveness from them this all are the good manners ramadan has taught us we never use our tongue in evil deeds we never bite bite people because we know if we bite bite the reward of the Ramadan will go away from us. So this all, this is the most important factor of Ramadan that should be there after the Ramadan. And remember this, this will create a good character in us, good akhlaq in us, good manners in us. And then these good manners will have a lot of impact on the wider society. I would like to tell you one thing, that one of the sheikh was narrating his story. That he took few books from the masjid. The books about Islam, introdu introducing Islam to the non-Muslims. He took and he gave this to his neighbor friend on the Eid time. The neighbor took very warmly and finished. Nothing happened. And after a few months on another occasion, he gave them food and things and he gave another book. And they took it very nicely and they finished it. And this was the routine in his life for a couple of years. And one day, all of a sudden, in the middle of the year, the neighbor knocked the door. And when he knocked the door, they said, oh, we would like to be a Muslim. We would like to be a Muslim. So they were shocked. And when they took them inside and they warmly welcomed. And you know, it's very emotional time if somebody wants to embrace Islam on your hand. It's very emotional time because it is a kind of life time once opportunity comes. And you think about the reward, subhanAllah, tremendous reward behind that. The whole family, whatever they act, the whole reward will come to you. You are really, really happy. They took them inside, they did the shahada and they start talking to them. And this man in his head, he is thinking, this is the effect of my books. 
the books which I have given, the copies of the Quran which I have given. He was thinking like this. Oh, the, the, he must have read and they, Subhanallah. Yes, there are people who read and they embrace Islam as well. But this person, for his shocking, he said, I embrace Islam only because of your treatment to your wife and your children. Subhanallah, he was shocked. He said, I didn't treat them extraordinary. It was the normal thing. But the respect he was giving to his wife, the respect he was giving to his children, the love and the care he was giving, this love and care as a Muslim, it came from the Prophet ﷺ in his life and it became a culture for him. He didn't even give care that he is doing this all. He is smiling and he is angry with his children but still he is loving them, he is looking after them. So this all manners, this person was reading. So he was not in fact reading the books you have given, he was reading your life, your treatment, your manners. SubhanAllah. Imagine brothers. If our akhlaq, if the people are seeing, are they going to read us in the similar manner as they read to that person? Are these people going to take Islam from our lives? Ramadan came to make our lives to that role model. That we do without even bothering, without even giving care that this and that will affect them. No, this is our routine. We get up. Yes, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "The best of you is the one who is best to his wives, his spouse, who treat them, who honor them, who respect them, who never says big words to them, or who never hit them." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam never hit the women or the children. The children who served the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for more than ten years, they have said that I have touched the nicest, uh, nicest silk cloth. But I did not find it nicer than the hand of the Prophet Muhammad I have smelled the perfume, the best perfume, but I never find the best perfume than the sweat of the Prophet Muhammad I have done so many things wrong in my life, but the Prophet never asked me why you did this wrong to me. That was the manners of the Prophet So remember this. Without even we care about this akhlaq, the other, this is the lesson for the other people. And if we have some bad habits, so Ramadan came to remove those bad habits from us. If we had the habit of getting angry quickly, what is the message of the fasting? To have the sabr, to have the patience. If you have the bad tongue, the Ramadan came, the Prophet wasallam said that whoever do not leave his foolish tongue, speaking foolishly, backbiting others, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need his leaving food and drink. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that leaving uh, his fast. He did not mention the fast. He said, leaving food and drink and lust. So remember this. The Ramadan came to create that kind of character. We have to apply that even after the Ramadan. And dear brothers, imagine this other way as well. I remember in the masjid, in our masjid. <coughs> One person who had been reading the books about Islam, and he was very, very close to Islam. And it was the day of Jum'ah. I was coming on the same road, on the Granger Park Road, towards the masjid. One brother, he brought the car, and he was entering from the main door, inside the masjid. And when he was entering, the brother who was front of him, he made his car very slowly. For whatever reason, because he might have some obstacle in front of him. Or he did not have anything, but he was thinking where to park or something. And this brother from back, and he was just putting full horn, and then he was swearing at him. You can see on his face the anger. So I was coming, and there was one or two English brothers, they were coming. They asked me, is this the mosque? So, Alhamdulillah, they didn't know I was the Imam. So I said, I just uh, said, yes, this is the most. He said, he's going to the prayer. I said, this manner does not suit the person who performs uh, the salah, who prays, who go to the masjid. Wallahi, that was the humiliation time for me. I wanted to rub my nose on the floor, out of the shame. Because what kind of character we are presenting, the manners we are presenting to the other people. Ramadan came for us to have the patience. 
So we have to have the patience. Yes, that brother must have some reason why he got the angry at that time. He must have some reason. I spoke to the brother later on and he was giving, he gave me this, this reason. Subhanallah, people don't know these reasons. They see your lahir. What you are giving the picture, your picture, they see this picture and they take the lesson from it. You have both the stories in front of you, brothers. Keep these lessons of the Ramadan in front of you and be the nicest person. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, <laughs> Treat the people, he did not say Muslims, he did not say the believers, people, everybody, Muslim, non-Muslim, everybody, all those are, are, are under the humanity. All of them, treat them with the best manners, with the best character. And our beloved Prophet وسلم, he said that I have been sent to perfect for you your manners. This was the teaching of the Prophet I pray to Almighty Allah that Allah make the effect of Ramadan, the crisis of Ramadan in our life, alive. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the good Muslim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our heart to accept the truth and grant us ability to follow the truth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show us the evil as the evil and keep us away from the evil. Inna alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala muwala amma ba'd. Dear brothers, the beauty of our religion, Islam, is that you perform one good act and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you ten times reward. And you do one evil, it will be written only one evil. Subhanallah. This is above the justice. This is the karam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you do one good deed, he'll give ten good deeds. But when you do one bad deed, he will give only one bad deed. And many times he forgive. This is the karam of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praiseworthy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worthy of the praises for this all. Dear brothers, we have fasted for a month. This month, fasting, in general terms, will get the reward of fasting 10 months. So, two months left. So, beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has said that whoever fasted six days after Ramadan in Shawwal, six days of Shawwal, he is like fasting the entire year, subhanAllah. So these two months which is left, if you fast six days of shawal, then you will get the reward of the two months. And then it is like you have fasted whole year. You will get that much reward. So sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is to fast six days of shawal. And when we should fast, we can fast straight after Ramadan. Or we can fast in the middle of the shawal or end of the shawal. But in this whole month is open. So whenever you get the chance, try to fast this six fast. This is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. By this, you will get the reward as you have fasted the entire year. I pray to Almighty Allah to grant us ability to fast the six days. And dear brothers, take this opportunity to make the dua for all those brothers who are suffering around the world. They could not celebrate the Eid as we did. They could not perform the Salatul Eid as we did. They could not greet each other and saying that Eid Mubarak to you and taqabbal Allah minna wa minkum a'mal as salihat They could not do that for whatever reason. As we are the brothers who are sharing the same faith, we should make dua for them. And remember the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He said, if you make the dua for some other person, in his absence, he doesn't know that you have made the dua. Angels make the similar dua for you. If you say, Allah, remove the trouble from them, 
the angels will say, oh Allah, remove the trouble from this person as well. So whatever you say, they will say the same thing. So dear brothers, remember in your du'as to those who are suffering around the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps the Muslim brothers around the world. Allah bring them in peace. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala combine them upon the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa wa arzukna attiba'ah. Wa arina al-batila batila wa arzukna istinaba. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa maqtina adhab al-nar. Before I finish the khutbah, I would like to thank all those brothers who have been working to generate the donations for the masjid. Alhamdulillah, we are about to reach the target. It's not very far. It's just the time of the calculation because so much and so many people have given in the last minute we could not add it. So we reach Alhamdulillah 480,000 pounds. Alhamdulillah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the best reward to the brothers who have been helping. And whoever have helped us through their donations, through their time, with their ideas, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this from all of them. Amen. And Allah grant them the best reward in this dunya and akhirah. Amen. This project is for the children, especially. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make their children pious for them. Amen. Make coolness of eyes for them. Amen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this sadqa jariya for us. Amen. And for our parents. Amen. And for our family. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya yuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim. Taslim Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Hamid al-Majid. اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمني ورحمكم الله ان الله يأمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجيب لكم ولا ذكر الله يذكر واقم الصلاه